Fires of Freddy's 4 has been pushed to its limits to say the least. It's been beaten by using the doors, without sound. But what about without the flashlight? Well, in this video, that's what I'm going to find out. Is it possible to beat Fires of Freddy's 4 without using the flashlight? So for the rules, quite simply, I gotta beat the whole game and I won't be using the flashlight. So with that, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and let's get into night one. So Fires of Freddy's 4 is quite a different game to the ones that came before it. Instead of being a security guard guarding a pizza place, we play as a child of brain damage, being haunted in his bedroom. This game has a bit of back to basics with only four characters you have to deal with. The Nightmare Animatronics, Nightmare Freddy, Nightmare Bonnie, Nightmare Chica, and Nightmare Foxy. On night one, we only have to deal with the first three. Also, like the first game, everyone works on movement opportunities, which happen on five second intervals. For a basic summary, every animatronic has an AI level between 0 and 20. Every 5 seconds, a random number is generated between 1 and 20. If the randomly generated number matches or is lower to the animatronic's AI level, then the animatronic will move. If not, then they won't move. Nightmare Bonnie and Nightmare Chica will use their movement opportunities to roam the upper halls before they approach the doors on the left and right respectively. Normally, we can shine the light down the hall to see if they're approaching and force them back into the middle position. However, we obviously can't do that. So that leads to the first challenge of the run. We are not able to push back the animatronics at all or stall their attacks because we can't use the flashlight. Once Bonnie or Chica make it to our door, we have to listen for breathing and shut the door in their face if they do so. The game says to flashlight after, but yeah, we can't and we don't need to. One good thing about not using the flashlight is the fact that we never risk dying at the door. So that's a plus. But now we must talk about the biggest issue with this entire challenge. It's this piece of shit. Yeah, not fun. Nightmare Freddy is probably the character that never gets a chance to jump scare you during normal gameplay. But during this challenge, it's a different story. Nightmare Freddy will slowly appear on the bed in the form of Freddles, and if allowed to fully form, will kill you. The way this works is that Nightmare Freddy will add his AI level to an invisible meter at every 4 second interval, that goes from 0 to 80. At 10, one Freddle will appear on the bed, at 20, two will appear, and at 30, three Freddles will appear on the bed. From there, you don't need to worry about anything until it reaches 60, at which point Nightmare Freddy will jump scare you the next time you look at the bed. At 80, he will jump scare you no matter what. Now, what this means is unlike Bonnie or Chica, Freddy does not work on movement opportunities, meaning there's no way to slow down this counter. On night one, Freddy has an AR level of one at 2 a.m. and two at 3 a.m. Each night lasts six minutes or 360 seconds meaning each hour is exactly 60 seconds. With Freddy adding his AI level every 4 seconds, this means that Freddy will unavoidably jump scare us by 5.30am. So you may be asking, how do we stop Freddy? The f flashlight. So because of this, the challenge is impossible. But I'm going to use the flashlight on Freddy. So while I beat up all the 7 year olds in the comments who are telling me that this challenge is just stupid, whatever that is, let's see how far I can get with this challenge regardless. So anyways, besides that, night one is honestly really easy. Even if being unable to push back Bonnie or Chica, they still won't make it to our door more than once because of how low their AO level is. So once I decided to continue the challenge by only fighting Freddy, it took me one attempt. Night 2 introduces Foxy, the last animatronic we need to deal with with this game. Well, at least for now. Foxy kind of combines the mechanics of Bonnie, Chica and Freddy into one. Foxy starts in the same place as Bonnie and Chica, but can move down either hall. If he makes it to the middle hallway, flashing him with the flashlight will push him back like Bonnie and Chica. If not, he will enter the room when we look at the opposite one he's at. Obviously, we can't flash him, which means he will always make it to our room. Once in our room, he works like Freddy, where he will slowly progress between four phases before jump scaring us. To slow him down, we have to shut the door in Foxy's face to repel him. You can tell what phase he's at by flashing him with the flashlight, which obviously we won't be doing. So what that means is that we will never know what phase Foxy is in, which means two things. One, there's a chance of us wasting too much time on Foxy, and two, the chance that we don't spend enough time, both of which result in death. Thankfully, however, Fox's AI on this night isn't really high enough to allow him to get to our room early in the night. Bonnie and Chica were actually the issue. Since we can't push them back, they attack way more often than usual, as flashing the hall also prevents them from moving to the hall at all. 
So, quite a few times, I ended up just getting overwhelmed with attacks until I was killed. But in all honesty, it wasn't that bad, and I eventually ended up beating the night. Also, I think this is obvious, but I just wanted to mention before we get into night three, it's impossible to beat Plus Trap without the flashlight, so I never, ever had the skip. So, yeah. Anyways. Night three was just terrible. Now look, I've said on multiple occasions that I think that Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 is the best Final Fantasy Freddy's game. I've even made an entire video going into detail as why I think this game is the best one. And while I still think this is the case, I did notice a massive flaw of this game while doing this challenge, which made my views on this game change a tad. The volume balancing issue with the jump scares are super loud in comparison to the rest of the game really started to piss me off. In fact, the reason I worked on the two fan game challenges was because I dead set didn't want to complete the challenge due to the jump scares. Final Fantasy IV wasn't scaring me, it just managed to piss me off. And keep in mind, I'm grinding quote a 10 brutal company, where the word bullshit is an understatement for what happens in those runs. However, I'm not a quitter, and I pressed on. This night was where Foxy became a massive fucking pain. His AI level jumps from max AI of 3 to f***ing 10. What the f***? This gives Foxy a 50% chance to move, which means he's pretty much always in our closet by 1am, if we are lucky. Obviously, this made the night a lot harder than I could have ever anticipated, because between dealing with Foxy, Bonnie and Chica were just attacking so goddamn much. This night was easily the worst one of the main nights, and let's show that with a montage. <laughs> So, eventually I did manage to beat the night, but it did leave a sour taste in my mouth. Night 4 was pretty much the same as Night 3, however Fox's AI goes from 10 to 5, which makes this night a lot easier. Foxy will still get in quite early, but usually he doesn't get in until 2am rather than 12am, which makes this challenge way, way, way easier. Those two hours allows me to just basically sugarcoat the main two. Night 4 is still not fun, but it was considerably easier than Night 3, and it didn't piss me off as much, so Night 4 was a breeze. Damn, just one more night and I'm done. Who the fuck? I am not shaped like a Ferris wheel! So Night 5 completely changes up the gameplay, as instead of having to deal with the main 4 threads, we only have one with Nightmare Fredbear. Nightmare Fredbear pretty much combines all the previous characters' mechanics into one. Fredbear will roam the top poles and enter either side. However, not using the flashlight actually works to our advantage, since normally flashing Fredbear causes him to get close to the door and if we flash him too long, he will eat us. So we just need to listen on what side of the room he is on and shut the door until we hear him move. So this means we can never have to use the flashlight, right? Oh, for f day. So yeah, at random points for the night, Fredbear will laugh and teleport to either the bed or the closet. If in the closet, we have to just shut the door on him, but if they're on the bed, we have to use the flashlight to scare them off. The question is, is there a chance that Fredbear will never hop onto the bed? Well, technically yes, but it's iffy. Every time Fredbear teleports, he has a 50-50 chance of either being on the bed or in the closet. And he can do this four times a night. The least amount of times he got teleported during a night was two, so about a 25% chance of him never hopping onto the bed. However, I'll be completely honest, I had no patience to grind out attempts. However, it is definitely possible to beat this night without the flashlight, you just gotta hope that Fredbear never hops into the bed. So yeah, anyways with that, Night 5 was pretty much the same as usual. So there we have it. Five Freddy's 4 is beaten, the child is eaten. Hey guys, I think the little man said he wants to give Fredbear a big kiss. Was that the bite of 87? And Five to Freddy's 4 without using the flashlight was not beaten. I mean, I used it the whole time with Nightmare Freddy, let's be real. I didn't do it. However, despite that one thing, the rest of the game can be beaten without the flashlight and hypothetically, Night 5 can be beaten without using the flashlight at all. If anyone can beat Night 5 without the flashlight, let me know. I would love to see it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed, please subscribe and let me know any other challenges you want to see. Have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.